I really wanted to actually sort of really hit the next uh, generation of what is coming down the AI pipeline. Uh, we have actually seen really massive adaption as well uh, as we move forward. But more importantly, on the horizon, we are seeing an anomaly. And I'm going to talk about that anomaly. I'm going to talk about how we are addressing it and what is there in the future uh, for AI. So let's really talk about you know, what does it incorporate to be really a data scientist? What skills does it take? And I think this, this Venn diagram depicts it perfectly. Um, if you really look at machine learning, it's at the intersection of computer science and coding and, and mathematics and statistics. If you look at application software, it is at the intersection of computer science and coding and domain knowledge. And if you really look at research, it's at the intersection of mathematics and statistics and domain knowledge in itself. And data science is a perfect combination of all of these three, which is machine learning, application software, and traditional research. Now, really, short of scaling the training of individuals in all of these three dimensions, good data science, uh, science skills are very hard to scale. Um, in fact, many of you know, um, good data science skills cost upward of half a million dollars in many of the geographies where the demand is very high. Uh, the only viable solution is to replace one or more of these quadrants with automation. Anytime such anomalies happen, where there's a large skew between demand and supply, there's actually a large space for automation. And in fact, I'm here to argue and show you that AI itself can be automated by multiple ways. And I will demonstrate to you what capabilities we are building at IBM and what the future will look like. And the future is there today, actually. So automating through domain knowledge is the one which is the hardest to actually automate. So I'm going to leave that as a fundamental platform that really people should focus on the domain knowledge, which is the hardest one to automate. Algorithms can be automated, techniques can be automated, but domain knowledge is the one which is we as humans really bring to the table. And, and automation can be built above it. Industry domain is where eventual realization of the AI value really happens. So we'll really focus on that one from the point of view of value add. Now, this is really the demand curve. As you can see, in 2018, uh, machine learning saw roughly 12x actually increase in the demand. Obviously, machine learning engineers in the LinkedIn uh, jobs report in 2017 saw around 10x. Uh, increase, and AI skills are quickly spreading beyond just the tech industry to every industry that you see. Every CEO and CIO has AI in their strategy. This is really the supply side of the dynamics. Um, on the x-axis is the hardness to fill. On the y-axis is the projected growth. And if you are in the upper right-hand side of this quadrant, you have a problem. The problem is actually called the supply side of the problem. So we saw the demand side, we saw the supply side, and there is a large gap between the two. There's another gap building up as well, which is really AI workflows are becoming increasingly bigger and a lot more complicated. Um, so from ground truth gathering to data cleaning to feature engineering, which is really complicated and I would say almost magic from a data science point of view, model selection to parameter optimization to, to really ensemble building to model validation, model deployment, and on and on. And that circle keeps on going. And the time spent on many of these steps is really increasing as well. So what do we need to do? We really need to combine the upper two circles, which is around computer science and coding, machine learning, mathematics and statistics, application software and traditional research into one, which I'll describe it as automation of AI or auto AI itself. So automated machine learning and data engineering, really, and being fed by the domain knowledge that data scientists and, and SMEs really bring to the table. And that really is what the future is going to look like. So there are three main things which I'm going to demonstrate to you. Hopefully, that will convince you that the future is actually there today. Number one, it's automation is actually automating the AI. We can leverage AI itself to automate AI. So number one is AI designing AI. We're going to take a look at example there. Number two, AI optimizing AI. And number three, AI correcting AI. So those are the three main things we're going to take a look at today and see where we really, what the future looks like. So first one, AI designing AI. 
you know, highly skilled researchers, data scientists are needed to really handcraft the latest and the greatest of AI. Um, handcrafting complex neural networks is a time-consuming task, uh, error-prone, and does not scale with time and resources. We all know this. These the barrier to entries are very high. Um, neural networks also continue to grow in size and complexity, as shown in the left-hand side of the, of the diagram here and on the right-hand side as well. And that evolution is continuing on a very fast basis, as it is evident from literally tens and thousands of papers published in conferences that you are well aware of. So what, what have we done? We have actually released a capability that's available online for you to try. It's called NewNets, which is part of Watson OpenScale. It's a new AI engine for neural network design that automatically synthesizes new neural network models or evolves and improves existing ones. How does it really work? It automatically generates the optimal neural network for a given training data without any coding required. So I'll emphasize again, it is not about we have like 100 neural networks and we go and take your training data and map it to one of them. We really design the neural networks from scratch, built, customized to, the, to that data that you provide us. And I'm going to show you a demo of it as well. So the, what kind of results are we getting? On the extreme right-hand side column, I'm showing best hand-tuned um, uh, neural networks designed for certain well-known benchmarks. MNIST is what I'll call a, a pipe cleaner, but there are others that get increasingly more complicated. And we have several optimizers available as part of this, this uh, engine. Um, some of them actually match well to certain data sets and others match well to other data sets. And as you can see, we are actually in many cases either increasing uh, either exceeding the accuracy of hand-designed networks or really meeting it. So we are pretty much in the ballpark with respect to human-designed networks. Uh, most importantly, we can do this literally in overnight runs, as opposed to months it might take from data scientist point of view. And we can do this in, in roughly one GPU, one to two GPUs, as opposed to thousands of GPUs that might have been used before, actually. So this is not about exhaustive search. It's really about being smarter. So I'm going to show you a demo that you're going to look. And what you will see is, so what you really are seeing is a compressed version of a run, because this was an overnight run. It's really a vehicle repair estimator neural network model being built. You see that accuracy increasing on the left-hand side. This, what you see in the network being designed, it's actually really going through thousands of data points. So you, the one that you see right at the, at the bottom, upper uh, lower right-hand side, is many, many designs that the, that the optimizer or the engine called NewNets is choosing and really giving, trying to give you the optimal design possible all within an overnight run. What you really do is upload your data and really let the, let the tool do the task. And finally, you end up with roughly an accuracy of 93% or slightly upward of 93%. And this is, again, it's almost like, look, ma, no hands, actually. So that's really the level that we are driving that automation to. And it can start from an existing design, or it can really start from a, from a totally scratch new design as well. Second one, I would say, is really AI optimizing AI. One of the key parts of, of uh, data science is really feature engineering, as many of the experts in the field have said as well. It's really one of the voodoo magic parts of, of AI. What we really have done is, so you really start from original data. The data scientist sits in the middle. You really look at you know, what are the functions through which I can combine many of the features in my data. You really go through, um, transform that data in, uh, in many ways. You actually look at model building and validation. You feed it back, and you continue that loop until you really get the right set of features. And it's a very painful and laborious process. Uh, what it really involves is experience, which is expertise coding, and really try an error. And you just iterate through this. So how can machines perform all of these automatically? What we really have done is pattern learning, uh, reinforcement learning-based methods, exploration, which is hierarchical exploration driven by performance numbers, and finally, fusion of useful combinations through intelligent enumeration and feature selection all automatically. And the results are that you can start with the model, the best of the model you have, roughly in this case I'm showing 89%, and you can improve that accuracy to 92%. Again, we are automating the task of really trial and error, which is very hard to do. And the last one is really around, this is really interesting, which is AI correcting AI. So the best example I can give is, if, I if I'm hard of see sort of seeing far, so I don't have a 20-20 vision, 
Um, there are two ways I can correct myself. I can go through uh, laser eye surgery, or the second option is I can get glasses, actually. Now, laser eye surgery is like you know, rebuilding the model itself. Um, so if I was a machine learning model, laser eye surgery on me will be like rebuilding the model, and glasses for me will be correcting AI itself through something that sits on top of it. We have actually released a capability in Watson OpenScale again, which manages and operates your AI and corrects it all automatically. So it really, AI correcting AI in real time without compromising model and accuracy. I actually have attached references to all the papers that have been written that are there on archive and published in conferences as well. I'm giving a detailed talk actually later on today. Uh, please join me and I can give you a lot more details. So thank you very much.